All right, ready to dive into some high yield dividend stocks. We're talking about building that passive income stream, maybe even reaching financial freedom. And we've got a bunch of YouTube videos, even a Morningstar article to help us sort it all out. Yeah, we'll look at different strategies, specific stocks, really try to get a good overall view of what's out there. It's not just about finding the highest yield, right? Got to understand how each approach works. I like that. It's about strategy. But before we get too deep into it, let's make sure everyone's on the same page here. Like, what exactly are dividends and how do you calculate that dividend yield? I hear that term all the time. Okay, think of it this way. When you own stock, you own a little piece of a company. When that company makes a profit, they can decide to reinvest that money back into the business. Or they can share some of it with their shareholders. And that's you. Those payouts, that's what we call dividends. Dividend yield, it's simply the annual dividend amount divided by the stock's current price expressed as a percentage. So if a stock's trading at, let's say, $100 and it pays out $4 in dividends every year, the yield would be 4%. So higher yield, more money in your pocket. Right. Okay, let's get into those strategies. This first one really caught my eye, using covered call ETFs. Yeah, covered call ETFs, they can be a really interesting way to boost your income. They invest in stocks, and at the same time, they write covered call options, which creates this premium income that gets paid out as dividends. This can lead to some really attractive yields, often higher than you'd see with traditional dividend stocks. We're talking potentially double-digit yields, right? Mm. Sources mentioned some ETFs like XYLD, OILK, and EWZ, and they were all around 11.8% yield. One YouTuber even said to earn $2,900 a month, you might only need around like $280,000 to $310,000 invested in these covered call ETFs compared to maybe $2 million with traditional dividend paying stocks. That's a huge difference. It is a big difference, and it's why these covered call ETFs have gotten so popular. But yeah. you got to understand how they work and understand the risks too. Options trading, there's always risk. And yeah, there's potential for high yields, but it's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. You got to stay informed, you got to manage your investments actively. Okay, so. Covered call ETFs, they're definitely interesting, but require a bit more attention. Before we go to the next strategy, just wanted to remind everybody to check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. You can get a free affiliate guide there. It's called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words, totally free. Just put in your name and email, click the verification link they send you. You can find the link in Brian's YouTube bio. Now back to those dividends. What other strategies did our sources talk about? Next up, we've got high yield REITs, real estate investment trusts. Ah, REITs. Those are like getting into real estate without having to deal with being a landlord. That's it. REITs own and manage those income producing real estate properties like your malls, offices, apartments, and they pay out a big chunk of their profits as dividends, which is why they're attractive to a lot of income focused investors. The sort of mentioned some REITs with yields that were really impressive. Two Harbors Investment at 20.3%. Brandywine Realty Trust at 19.9% and Orchid Island Capital at 19.4%. Yeah, those are some of the higher yielding REITs you'll find out there. But keep in mind, REIT dividends, they can go up and down. Things like occupancy rates, interest rates, the whole economic climate, they all play a role. So there's potential for growth, but also risk, like with any investment, right? One YouTuber mentioned that to get to like a $35,000 annual income, you might need around $320,000 invested in REITs, but obviously this would depend on the specific REITs you pick and their yields. They also talked about dollar cost averaging as a strategy, you know, to help reduce that risk and maybe even reach financial independence within five, seven years. Yeah, dollar cost averaging with REITs, it can be a really good strategy for the long term. Instead of putting a big chunk of money all at once, you spread out your investments over time, buying shares at different prices, helps to reduce the impact of market ups and downs, and it could give you a lower average cost per share over the long run. Makes sense. It's about consistency, discipline, right? Yeah. Okay, before we jump into that third strategy, one more time, make sure to go to BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, to grab your free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. It's over 12,300 words. It's awesome. Just sign up with your name and email, click the verification link they send you, and you're good. Links in Brian's YouTube bio. All right, back to dividend strategies. What was that third one? The third one focuses on what we call dividend aristocrats. These are companies with a proven track record at least 25 years in a row of increasing their dividend payouts. 
These are like the Hall of Famers of dividends. 25 years. That's impressive. Talk mm-hmm. about consistency. What are some examples of those dividend aristocrats? Absolutely. 3M, Leggett & Platt, and Walgreens Boots Alliance. Those are all classic examples. They're known for being stable. They've got steady growth, and they're committed to rewarding those shareholders. Their average yield is around 7%, right? Yeah. Which is lower than some of those REITs and covered call ETFs we talk about. Yeah. But that consistency, that's got to be a huge plus. You got it. Dividend aristocrats, they tend to be well-established companies. They've got strong competitive advantages, sometimes called a wide moat. This means they have a real edge in their industries. Let's them weather those economic storms and keep making those profits, which leads to those nice, steady, and growing dividends. One YouTuber mentioned that to hit a $2,900 monthly income from dividend aristocrats, you probably need around $500,000. Still a big chunk of change, but way less than that potential $2 million with regular dividend stocks. Seems like each strategy's got its pluses and minuses, right? Mm -hmm. Higher yields, maybe more risk, versus lower yields, but more stability. Finding that balance is key. Depends on your goals and your risk tolerance. Exactly. There's no one right way to invest for dividends. It's about understanding your own financial goals, how much risk you're comfortable with, your investment timeline. Then you can pick the strategies and the stocks that fit. Okay, so we've got covered call ETFs for potentially high yields, high yield REITs for exposure to real estate, and then dividend aristocrats for that stability and consistency. Now let's talk about some of those specific dividend stocks that were mentioned. I like that they come from a range of different industries. Gives us a more diversified look, right? Diversification, super important. It's not just about spreading your money across different companies, but across different parts of the economy too. Helps manage risk and maybe capture some growth opportunities in various areas. So let's start with public storage, ticker symbol PSA. 3.5% yield, which isn't the highest we've seen, but their stock price is up 20% this year. Yeah, public storage, the interesting thing about them is their low FFO payout ratio. It's only 59% and they have low debt. FFO, that's funds from operations. It's a key thing to look at with REITs because it shows the cash flow they're making from their actual operations. Gives you a better idea of how profitable they really are compared to just looking at net income. That low payout ratio tells us that public storage, they've got a good amount of wiggle room to maybe bump up their dividend in the future. Ah, so even though their current yield isn't the highest, there's that potential for it to grow down the line. Okay, what about VCI properties? Ticker symbol VCI. This REIT's got a 5% yield and owns some pretty cool properties, like Caesars Palace and the Venetian. VCI property is definitely one to watch. They have a good history of dividend growth, averaging 7.9% every year, and their payout ratio is low too, just 61%. Shows they're in good financial shape and could keep those dividend increases coming. Next, there's Host Hotels and Resorts, ticker symbol HST. They own properties in some fancy hotel chains like Marriott and Hyatt, offering a 4.6% yield. Sounds like they cater to a crowd that likes the good life. They do. And host hotels and resorts is doing better than a lot of the other hotel REITs, showing strong FFO and dividend growth. Focusing on those high-end properties, that puts them in a good spot in the lodging sector. All right. Then there's LXP Industrial, ticker symbol LXP, 5% yield. They specialize in warehouse distribution with some big names like Amazon and Walmart as tenants. Sounds like they're riding that whole e-commerce wave. LXP Industrial, they're in a good position. That low payout ratio, only 42%, and they're expecting strong FFO growth this year, so they have room to keep increasing that dividend. Focusing on those warehouses, that's a smart move these days with everyone shopping online. Alexandria Real Estate Equities, ticker symbol R. This one sounds interesting. They specialize in life science laboratories, and they even have like a a venture capital arm. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty unique for a REIT. Alexandria Real Estate Equities, yeah, they offer a 4.4% yield, and they've got a pretty low payout ratio, 64%. But one thing to note is that their FFO growth isn't quite as strong as some of the other REITs we talked about, so investors might want to do a little more research on their business model and growth before jumping in. Sounds like there's potential there, but a little more digging is needed. All right, now let's switch gears and talk about Gladstone Investment, ticker symbol GAME. 7.5% yield, which is lower than some business development corporations or BDCs, but they've had a 66% stock price increase over the past 10 years. Not bad at all. Gladstone Investment, what sets them apart is how they do things. They usually take a bigger equity position in their investments, around 25% equity and 75% debt. Other BDCs, they often aim for less than 10% equity. So Gladstone's taking on more risk, but they're also going for those higher returns. And it seems to be working looking at that stock price growth. It has. And their return on equity, or ROE, consistently beats the industry average, shows that their approach is working. Okay, so Gladstone Capital, ticker symbol GLAD, 
another one from the Gladstone family, and they've got an 8.8% yield. They invest across 12 different industries, so not as diversified as some, but their numbers look pretty solid. You're right about the diversification, more is generally better. But Gladstone Capital, they stand out because of their high yield spread, which means the difference between their dividend yield and the yield on those safer investments, it's pretty big. They've also got low debt and have seen some amazing dividend growth, like 135% over the past five years. 135%. That shows they know how to make money and reward their shareholders. Now. Hercules Capital, ticker symbol HTGC, this one stood out to me with a 10.2% yield. They focus on lending to those high growth companies in tech and life sciences, those industries that are always changing and innovating. Hercules Capital, they have a really good track record of growing their investment income and running their operations efficiently. All that helps them deliver that attractive yield. Okay, what about Main Street Capital, ticker symbol Main, 8.4% yield, and they've got a well-diversified investment portfolio. Main Street Capital, another popular choice for income investors. They're known for their high yield spread, low debt, and those strong efficiency ratios shows they're managing their business well. All right, Horizon Technology Finance, ticker symbol HRZN. This one also jumped out with a 12% yield. They focus on secured loans to companies in life sciences and technology. But I did notice they have higher leverage than some people might be comfortable with. That's an important point. Leverage, in this case, we're talking about the amount of debt a company uses to finance its assets. Higher leverage, it can boost returns, but it can also increase risk, especially when the economy is not doing so well. So yeah, that 12% yield looks tempting, but you got to weigh that against the potential risks of that leverage. Exactly. Do your homework, especially with companies that have higher leverage before you make any investment decisions. Okay, before we move on, one last reminder for everyone listening. Go to BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and download your free affiliate guide. It's called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of pure gold, totally free. Just put in your name and email, click that verification link in your inbox, you're all set. You can find the link in Brian's YouTube bio. All right, back to those dividend stocks. What other companies caught your attention? Let's look at some companies that might not be those big time dividend payers just yet, but they could become big players down the road. First up, Wynn Resorts, ticker symbol W-Y-N-N. Wynn Resorts. Yeah. They're a big name in casinos and resorts, right? They've got properties in Vegas, Macau, and even a new one being built in the Middle East. That's right. They're paying a $1 annual dividend now, but they're expecting that to go up a lot in the next few years. Strong cash flow, big expansion plans, and the travel industry's bouncing back. All that points to a good future for Wynn Resorts and its dividend. I see that. They're tapping into that growing middle class in China and India, plus the tourism boom in Vegas. It's like a comeback story, right? Yeah. From suspending dividends during the pandemic to potentially becoming a dividend powerhouse. That's the thing about investing. Sometimes those setbacks, they create opportunities. You just got to be patient and have that long-term view. All right. Here's another one that might surprise some people. Cheesecake Factory. Ticker symbol cake. Cheesecake Factory, yeah, they're known for their desserts, but they also pay a dividend, a dollar or eight a year, and it's expected to go up. Analysts think their growth is going to pick up, so it could be an undervalued stock with room for both dividend and share price growth. Good reminder that sometimes you got to look in unexpected places to find the best opportunities. You got it. Think outside the box, look beyond those traditional sectors. That's where you find those hidden gems. Now, let's talk about a company that's been consistently growing its dividend for over two decades. Nike, ticker symbol NKE. Nike, classic global brand, long history of success. Nike, they're a textbook example of a blue chip company that takes care of its shareholders with growing dividends. 23 years in a row, they've been increasing their dividend. That's a real commitment to shareholder value. That's reliability right there. Yeah. And they're not just bumping it up a little bit. They're making some meaningful increases. Absolutely. They've been steadily raising that quarterly payout, putting more money in those investors' pockets. Their global brand, their innovative products, and their strong financial position make them a force to be reckoned with in that athletic apparel and footwear industry. All right, let's talk about a tech giant relatively new to this dividend game, but could become a major player. Meta Platforms, ticker symbol Meta. Meta Platforms, that's Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. They just started paying dividends in February this year, 2024. Right now they're paying $2 a year, 
which might not seem like a lot compared to some of these other companies. But, you know, with all that cash flow they have and their dominance in online advertising, I bet they have a lot of room to increase that dividend. You're right. Meta platforms, they have all the potential to become a real dividend powerhouse. Could be paying out five figures a year someday. Wow. Five figures from one stock. Now that's the kind of dividend snowball I'm looking for. It shows you the power of investing for the long haul and letting that compounding work its magic. You invest in companies like Meta, strong fundamentals, committed to their shareholders, and you could build some serious wealth over time. And Meta's not the only tech giant that's jumped on the dividend bandwagon recently. What about Alphabet, ticker symbol G-O-G-G? Alphabet, that's Google's parent company. They're also fairly new to paying dividends. Right now, it's $0.80 a year. But just like Meta, they have tons of potential to grow that payout. It's really interesting to see these tech giants getting into the dividend game. Shows they're maturing and they want to return value to those shareholders. It's a great opportunity for investors. You get in early on these dividend growth stories and you could benefit from both the rise in dividends and the stock price going up. Speaking of good opportunities, what's next on our list? All right, next we've got a company that's all about beauty and luxury. Estee Lauder, ticker symbol, EL. Estee Lauder. <laughs> They're iconic, right? Their products are known all over the world. They've had some tough times recently, but long term, they've got a bright future. Right now, the dividend's $2.64 a year, but that's expected to go up as their business recovers and growth picks back up. So there's a bit of a waiting game, but could be worth it for those who are patient. A lot of times with dividend investing, it's about finding that those companies that are temporarily undervalued, you know, strong fundamentals, but the market's not giving them enough credit. You buy in at a discount and then you benefit as both the dividend and the stock price go up. Estee Lauder could be a hidden gem for those dividend investors. Definitely worth a closer look. Their brand power, they're global, they're always innovating, makes them a strong player in that beauty and personal care industry. Now let's talk about a company that's been dealing with a tough housing market, but they're still paying a hefty dividend. Whirlpool, ticker symbol WHR. Whirlpool, yeah, the appliance maker shows you how resilient these well-established companies can be. Housing market's been tough, but they've kept a healthy payout ratio, and they're offering a $7 annual dividend. That's a pretty big dividend for a stock that's trading just over $100. It's like they're saying, hey, times are tough, but we're still going to take care of our shareholders. That's the kind of commitment you want to see. Companies that prioritize their shareholders, that have the financial strength to handle those economic ups and downs. So what could drive Whirlpool's growth in the future? What could lead to even higher dividends down the line? Well, as the housing market recovers, Whirlpool is going to benefit. When people start buying new homes again, upgrading their old ones, that's going to drive sales for Whirlpool, and that could boost their dividend growth. It's like waiting for that spring to uncoil. Once the housing market picks up, Whirlpool could really take off. Good analogy. It's about understanding how some industries work in cycles and finding those companies that are ready to benefit when those cycles turn around. We've covered a lot of companies today, different industries, different types of dividend payers. It's amazing how many options there are out there. That's one of the great things about dividend investing. You can build a portfolio that fits your interests, your risk tolerance, pick companies and sectors that you think have a good future. It's not just about chasing the highest yield but finding companies that fit your overall strategy. Companies that can keep paying and growing those dividends over time. Exactly. Build that diversified portfolio of quality companies, and that can generate a steady stream of passive income, help you reach those financial goals. All right, before we wrap up part one of our deep dive, I want to remind everyone, check out BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and grab your free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of valuable stuff. Just sign up with your name and email, click that verification link, you're good to go. The link's in Brian's YouTube bio. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground today, different strategies, a bunch of individual stocks. What are some of the key takeaways our listeners should remember as they start their own dividend investing journey? Well, one of the most important things is to remember that dividend investing, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's about patience, being consistent, thinking long-term. I like that analogy. It's not about getting rich quick. It's about building that foundation for steady income growth. Exactly. And another thing, diversification, super important. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread those investments out across different companies, different industries, different dividend strategies even. Makes your portfolio more resilient, right? Helps it handle those market ups and downs and still deliver those consistent returns over time. What else? Do your research. 
Don't invest in a company just because it has a high dividend yield. Dig deeper, understand their business, their financials, their growth potential. It's about making informed decisions, really understanding the companies you're putting your money into. Welcome back. We're diving deeper into these high yield dividend stocks. Remember, we were just talking about how important that research is, that due diligence. Yeah, it's easy to get caught up in chasing those big yields. But like we said, you got to know what those companies are all about. Right. It's about finding companies that are solid, you know, good fundamentals, mm -hmm. companies that can handle the tough times and keep rewarding their shareholders. Thinking long term. Speaking of tough times, let's go back to Wynn Resorts for a minute. They had a rough go during the pandemic. That whole travel industry took a big hit. They did. Had to make some tough calls, even suspended their dividend. But what impressed me was how they bounced back. They brought that dividend back in May of 23, started with a 25 cent quarterly payout. And from what we talked about, their future's looking pretty good. Absolutely. Strong cash flow, those expansion plans, and people are traveling again. All good signs for Win Resorts and their dividend. It's a real comeback story, right? Okay. From zero dividends during the pandemic to potentially becoming a dividend powerhouse. Shows you, investing, it's a long game. Sometimes those tough times, those are the times that create the best opportunities. Okay, how about another company that had to adjust their dividend during the pandemic? Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake Factory, yeah, they had those same challenges, you know, restaurants closed, limited capacity, the whole industry struggled. Yeah, that must have been really hard for a business that depends so much on people dining in. But they also showed some resilience, brought that dividend back in May of 22. And they've kept it steady at 27 cents a quarter ever since. Shows their commitment to their shareholders, even with all this inflation we've been seeing. It's good to see companies that prioritize those dividend payments even when things are tough, yeah. you know, says a lot about their stability, their vision for the future. Now let's talk about a company that's been like a role model for dividend growth for over 20 years, Nike. Mm, Nike, yeah. yeah. They're all about athletic excellence, innovation, that brand's everywhere. 23 years in a row, they've been increasing their dividend. Talk about consistency. They just keep raising that payout, giving those investors a nice, reliable stream of passive income, and it keeps growing. Sounds like Nike should be in every dividend investor's portfolio. They're definitely a strong contender, that's for sure. That brand recognition, those innovative products, they're financially solid, a real leader in their industry. Before we move on to our next dividend star, quick reminder for everyone, check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. Yeah, you can get a free affiliate guide there. It's called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words packed with valuable information. All you got to do is put in your name and email, click the verification link they send you, you're good to go. You can find the link in Brian's YouTube bio. All right, back to our dividends. We were just talking about Nike and their impressive track record. What other companies are we going to look at? Let's talk about a tech giant, one that's pretty new to paying dividends but could become a major player, Meta Platforms. Meta Platforms, that's the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, right? They just started paying dividends back in February of this year, 2024. So yeah, they're still in the early stages of their dividend journey, paying $2 a year right now. It might not seem like a lot compared to some of these other companies we've talked about, but think about it, they've got a ton of cash flow. They dominate that online advertising world. I'm betting they've got plenty of room to grow that dividend. You got it. Meta platforms, they've got everything they need to become a real powerhouse when it comes to dividends. Could be paying five figures a year someday. Five figures from one stock, that's impressive. It really shows you how powerful long-term investing can be. Compounding, you know? You invest in companies like Meta, solid fundamentals, committed to their shareholders, and you can build real wealth over time. And Meta is not the only tech giant that's getting into the dividend game. What about Alphabet? Alphabet, yeah, Google's parent company. Another one that's fairly new to paying dividends. Right now it's 80 cents a year. But just like Meta, huge potential to grow that payout. It's exciting to see these big tech companies embracing dividends. Shows they're maturing, they want to reward those shareholders. And then for investors, it's a great chance to get in early on these potential dividend growth stories. Speaking of opportunities, what else is on our list? Let's talk about a company that's all about beauty and luxury, Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder, yeah. Their products are iconic. Those brands are known all over the world. They've had some challenges recently, but their long-term outlook is good. Dividends $2.64 a year right now, and analysts think it's going to go up as their business recovers and growth picks up. Sounds like Estee Lauder could be a good pick for those 
patient dividend investors. Mm -hmm. You know, those who are willing to ride out any short-term bumps in the road. Exactly. Remember, dividend investing, it's not just about the current yield. It's about the long-term potential of the company. Yeah, let's look at a company that's been dealing with a tough housing market, but is still paying a nice dividend. Whirlpool. Whirlpool, the appliance maker. Yeah. They're a good example of a well-established company that's committed to their shareholders. The housing market's been rough, but they've kept a healthy payout ratio, and they're currently paying a $7 annual dividend. That's a good payout for a stock that's trading just over $100. Shows they really care about their shareholders, even when times are tough. So what could drive Whirlpool's growth going forward? What could lead to even bigger dividends? Yeah, I'm curious about that too. What do you think? As that housing market starts to recover, Whirlpool's going to benefit. When people start buying homes again, upgrading their kitchens and all that, that's going to drive sales for Whirlpool, and that could boost their dividend growth. It's like a coiled spring waiting to be released. Once the housing market gets going again, Whirlpool could really take off. Great analogy. It's about understanding those cycles, you know, how some industries go up and down and finding the companies that are ready to benefit when those cycles turn around. We've talked about a lot of different companies today, from those big well-known names to some of the up-and-comers. Lots of different industries, lots of different types of dividend payers. It's a big world out there when it comes to dividends. Lots of opportunities for investors who are looking for that steady income. Before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, one more reminder for everyone. Go to BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and download your free affiliate guide. It's called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words packed with great information, absolutely free. Just enter your name and your email, click the verification link, and you're all set. The link is in Brian's YouTube bio. All right, back to our dividend discussion. As we wrap up part two of our deep dive, what are some of the main things our listeners should keep in mind as they continue their dividend investing journey? One of the most important things, remember dividend investing, it's a long-term thing. Yeah, it's not about getting rich quick. It's about building that wealth slowly and steadily over time. Exactly. Patience, consistency, focus on those good quality companies, those are the keys. And diversification, can't forget about that. Right. Spread your investments around different companies, different industries, different strategies even. That's how you build a portfolio that can handle those market ups and downs. And never underestimate the importance of doing your research. Yeah, don't just chase those high yields. Really dig into those companies. Understand their business, their financials, their growth potential. Don't just go for the biggest yield. Look for those companies that have good fundamentals that are committed to taking care of their shareholders. Those are all really valuable insights. I think our listeners will find this helpful as they explore the world of dividend investing. Absolutely. Dividend investing can be a really great way to build wealth and reach your financial goals. Join us for part three of our deep dive. We'll keep exploring this fascinating world. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've been talking all about these high yield dividend stocks and I'm ready for more insights. What else can you share with us? We've covered a lot of different companies, strategies, but there's always more to learn about dividends. I'm all ears. What haven't we talked about yet? Well, let's dig a little deeper into something we mentioned before, funds from operations, or FOFO. Really important when you're looking at REITs. Mm, FOFO, yeah. Why is that so important for REITs specifically? Because the regular way we look at a company's profits, net income, it doesn't really give you the whole picture for REITs. REITs, they own a lot of real estate, and those properties, they depreciate over time, and that gets factored into net income. So their net income might look smaller than it really is because of that depreciation. Exactly. FFO adjusts for that depreciation, so it shows you the actual cash flow the REIT's making from its operations. So it's a better way to see if they can actually pay and grow those dividends. Right. When you're looking at those payout ratios for REITs, you want to use FFO, not net income. A low FFO payout ratio, that's a good sign, means they have room to keep paying those dividends, maybe even increase them. Makes sense. It's all about making sure those dividend checks keep coming. Now let's talk about diversification again. It's not just about investing in a bunch of different companies. It's also about having different types of dividend payers in your portfolio. That's an interesting thought. What do you mean by different types of dividend payers? Well, think about the companies we've talked about. You've got your REITs, they're focused on real estate. Then you've got your BDCs, they invest in debt and equity of other businesses. 
Then there's your traditional corporations like Nike, Whirlpool, and those tech giants like Meta and Alphabet. So if you spread your investments across those different types, you're basically diversifying your income streams. That's the idea. Different types of companies, they react differently to the economy and the markets. So by having a mix, you can smooth out those bumps and create a more stable portfolio. Like having multiple safety nets for your passive income. I like that. Here's something to think about as you build your dividend portfolio. Don't be afraid to look beyond the familiar. There are so many companies out there that pay dividends big and small. Good point. Got to keep an open mind. Look for those hidden gems. Exactly. Sometimes those lesser known companies, they can offer the best dividend opportunities. It's all about doing your research, you know, really digging in and finding those companies that are undervalued, that have those strong fundamentals and that are committed to their shareholders. The world of dividends, it's always changing. There's always something new to learn, new companies to add to your watch list. Speaking of learning new things, we got to remind everyone about BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. Yep. You can grab that free affiliate guide there. It's called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Packed with info, over 12,300 words. Just enter your name and email, click the verification link, and you're good to go. The link's in Brian's YouTube bio. As you're building your portfolio, keep in mind it's a journey, not a destination. You're always learning, adapting to the markets, staying focused on your goals. It's about enjoying the ride, celebrating those wins along the way, and letting that compounding work its magic to build a better financial future. Dividend investing, it can be really rewarding. You take the time to learn, you explore those opportunities, you build a strategy that fits your goals, and you can unlock the power of passive income, even achieve financial freedom. As we wrap up our deep dive into these high-yield dividend stocks, any final words of wisdom for our listeners? Don't wait to get started. Even small investments, if you're consistent, they can make a big difference over time. Compounding, it's powerful. The earlier you start, the more time you have for that dividend snowball to grow. So we've covered a lot, right? Strategies, companies, possibilities. What does it all mean? It's time to take action. Use what you've learned. Think about your goals and start building that passive income stream. That first step could be anything. Researching a company, opening a brokerage account, even just buying your first share of a dividend stock. Every journey starts with a single step. Well said. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. We hope you found it helpful, maybe even inspiring. Happy investing, everyone.